LAFM and 7SD, the temper trap and fader. Hello there, Glenn here, playing the best mix for your drive home. Hope you're having a nice one so far. And thank you for being part of the show. You can call any time, by the way. Maybe you've got a problem you want to discuss or maybe you've got traffic problems. one three hundred eighty nine three eighty nine three. Now, would you believe that the average age that a child is given a smartphone is 10? So why do parents like Bill Gates and Apple's current CEO, Tim Cook, restrict their their families, technology and access to social media. What do they know that we don't know? To help answer the question, Claire Orange, who is a parent educator, joins me. Uh, welcome to the show, Claire. So what do Apple bosses know that we don't know? Well, isn't this an interesting? It almost brings up a feeling of a conspiracy theory, doesn't it? That, mm. um, there's something about this this addiction of technology and it's been very interesting in the last few days watching the commentary about actually how many people are very addicted um, to their to their devices, to their social media, to their online lives. And it doesn't seem to matter if it's teens or, you know, people who are who are, you know, a bit later in life. Um, it, it's got this incredible mm-hmm. addictiveness to it, doesn't it? You really do have the world right there at the end of your fingertips. There's really not much need to have any sort of reference books for kids anymore. Mm. It's just so much easier for kids to Google. So it does seem to be such a handy solution to most things right there in your pocket, whether it be communication mm. or information. What damage is being done to our children who use devices hours and hours a day? Well, lots of lots of damage is, is is being done, and I think the research that's coming out now is very telling. So, actually, the the, the fundamental physical changes to the human brain with that exposure to, especially that blue light radiation, really does mm. change sleeping patterns in children. So, because that blue light says to the human brain, the sun is up, the human brain doesn't prepare itself chemically for sleep using that sleep chemical of of melatonin. So we know that, you know, children who are on their devices late at night, for example, are getting a very unhealthy dose of blue light radiation, which is telling their brains to stay awake. And of course, sleep is tied to lots of issues around immunity and mental health especially and you know we've seen all of that commentary come out now about um, the obesity and that epidemic mm. in our children as well so we know that it's not just a, just at a brain-based level it's affecting little bodies as well you know it's amazing when i was growing up the problem was too much tv now it's tv and smartphones or screens yeah and, and you know I, I think what you'll find is that the, the need for TV is dropping away, really. Children are watching most of that on their devices through mm. Netflix or, or other service providers where really, like you know, we said before, it's right there at the end of their fingertips so they can watch TV shows, they can watch YouTube, you know, very quick, fast serve information coming through to our children all on the one medium. What about parents who say, well, my children need the devices for education? Yeah, and, and it's a reasonable consideration. I mean, we have a vast number of schools in Australia starting children in year four taking devices. So, uh, you know, bring your own device mm. to school as a fundamental part of the education. And I think that's quite reasonable. We're entering, you know, the digital age. Our kids are going to have jobs that whatever they do is going to have an online component. That's That's the reality. So... It is fair, but, you know, it just comes down to that. How do you parent it? How do you set limits like you do on anything else around eating or socialisation, around behaviour? We've got to get the same with our children's online life because it's not really the device. Mm. It's the way in which it's used. So what tips do you have for parents? Early on, parents should think about how do you educate your child now while you can still influence it, much easier to influence a seven-year-old than a fourteen-year-old. Believe me, mm. I've had I've had uh, you know four of each of those, and golly, I'd, I'd rather influence a seven-year-old. So we've got to start early educating our kids about the power um, of these devices to to give them information, but also to overtake their lives and how to manage that. We've got to have good boundaries. It's not always easy as a parent 
to take your child's device away for their for their own well-being no. because it can cause lots of upset. But you've just got to do it like any other boundary. You wouldn't let them sit in front of the TV for hours or eat whatever they felt like or go to bed when they wanted to. We have limits and boundaries. So that's a really healthy thing for okay. parents right from the get-go. Put that in place. And I'd, I'd also say, you know, one of the things that's, that's important is right from the beginning, until your children go into their adult years, if they're living in your home, that there's no devices in bedrooms. Okay. That, that's fundamental for, for sleep and brain and family communications and relationships. And you can't watch what they're doing in their bedrooms. Mm. So if all parents just had that whole policy in the home to keep those devices out of bedrooms, only in common space, otherwise you take a consequence if I find them in your bedroom, we'd have much healthier kids. There we go, some great ideas. And Claire, for more information, where can parents go? If they want to look at what we do in terms of children's wellbeing, there's always the website. So we are Best Programs for Kids. Lots of information for parents there. And then there's also the Office of the eSafety Commissioner, which is just hordes of information for parents on that online wellbeing for children. Thank you so much for your time, Claire. That's my great pleasure. Thank you for having me on the show. And for more parenting tips, you can head to our Drive Home page, LAFM or 7SD.com.au. Coming up, your chance to win $90 to the Einhorst Bar and Grill. We're going to play Bottle Top Trivia in three minutes on LAFM and 7SD.